Let us talk about machinery safety. Our lesson today will focus on machinery hazards, machinery accidents, methods for controlling machinery hazards, machinery protection, and measures for prevention and control. At the end of this lesson, we hope you achieve these two objectives. Objective number one, identify different types of machinery hazards and objective number two, explain the methods for preventing and controlling machinery hazards. Do you know what is machine? Machine is equipment that can supply power and has both fixed and moving parts, each serving a particular function. Fixed parts are the non-operational or non-functional parts of the machine. Meanwhile, moving parts are the operational or functional parts of the machine. There are a lot of machinery hazards that can be found at the workplace. Some of them include cutting hazard, shearing hazard, stabbing and puncturing hazard, impact hazard, entanglement hazard, friction and abrasion hazard, crushing hazard, drawing in hazard, ejection hazard, and release of potential energy hazard. Cutting hazard is a hazard that occurred when you have contact with sharp surface such as saw, blade of a knife, or cutting disc. Shearing hazard is a hazard that will remove or separate body parts by cutting. Shearing hazard can occur between two moving machines, between a machine part and the workspace, and between a static machine and a moving machine. Stabbing and puncturing hazards are hazards that can occur when the tips of machine parts work materials and objects flying into and piercing the body. Impact hazard occurs when an object or part of a machine acts on the body but does not puncture or pierce it. An example is when worker hit by a moving part of a machine. Entanglement hazard happens when clothing or hair entangled in the parts of a machine that rotate or move like roller machine, gear, or a wheel. Friction and abrasion hazards are types of hazard that cause the burning or removal of a layer or skin on the body when the surface of the skin gets into contact with the rough surface of a moving machine part. Crushing hazard is the pressing of a part of the body between the two objects or solid machine parts like stamping machine or power press. Drawing hazard occurs when a body part is pulled into the machine and trapped between the moving parts of the machine. Ejection hazard occurs when work materials or parts of a machine are pushed out due to failure of the machine or failure of work material. Release of potential energy is the release of force that stored in an object that is not moving. The basic method for determining the control of machinery hazard is similar with other hazards. First, you have to identify the hazards. Second, conduct the risk assessment. And third, propose controls based on the level of the risk. Fencing of Machinery and Safety Regulations 1970 have outlined the provisions related to safe use and protection of machinery. The objectives of these provisions are number 1. To protect the worker from hazardous parts of machinery that may not be designed, constructed, located, or used in a safely manner. And number 2. To prevent any accidents involving machinery. When you select machinery protection, you must at least meet the minimum requirements which are Protection can avoid contact. Protection can prevent objects from falling into machine. Protection used does not create new hazards. 
and protection used does not create new obstructions or distractions. There are basically four types of machinery protection. Number one, cards. Number two, devices. Number three, isolations. And number four, operations. The selection of machinery protection depends on type of operation or equipment, size or shape of material, method of operation, physical layout of the workplace, type of material and production requirements. Guards are protection that will act as a barrier that can prevent the human body from coming into contact with the hazardous parts of the machine. Guards that used must be designed according to engineering standards, sturdy, able to provide required protection, protect the hazardous part as close as possible, do not interfere with work and can be used safely. Do you know how many types of guards we have for machinery protection? Let's view all of these. Number one, fixed guard. Fixed guard is a type of guard that permanently fixed to the machine. It does not have any moving parts and its functions are not dependent on moving parts. Number two, interlock guard. Interlock guard has inbuilt tripping mechanism that stops the machine when the guard is open. Number three, adjustable guard. Adjustable guard is a guard that combines the elements of adjustability which, after adjusting, stays in same position during operations. Number four, self-adjusting guard. The opening of this guard is determined by movements of work material. It prevents entry of persons into the hazardous area but allows entry of work materials. The guard will return to original position when operations are stopped. Protection using devices are used to stop machine if hand or body part accidentally enters danger zone, releases the operator's hand from the danger zone, act as a barrier for the operator's hand from entering danger zone, handling of machinery with control of both hands and acts as a barrier that may be incorporated with the machine operations. There are four types of devices used for protection against machinery hazard. Number one, presence sensing device. This device will stop machine or disrupts work cycle or operations if worker is in danger zone. Number two, pullback device that uses a cable that is attached to the worker's hand or arm. It is usually used for machinery with tripping action features. Number three, stop device that uses a cable connected to a fixed machine part that is attached to the worker's hand or arm. Number four, safety control device. This device is manually activated and needs to be manually reset to start the machine. For protection using isolation method, it is based on position or distance and method of feeding or production of materials. For position or distance, the hazardous part is placed at a location that is not easily accessible or hard to reach so as to avoid any contact. For method of feeding or production of materials, the machine will use automatic feeding semi-automatic feeding, automatic productions, or robotics. In preventing the occurrence of accidents, several causal factors for accidents need to be considered before taking preventive and control measures. Number one, human factors. Number two, machinery factors. Number three, factors of environment or surrounding areas. As a conclusion for this lesson, let us recap the important points. Each machine possesses several types of hazards like cutting, shearing, stabbing and puncturing, impact, entanglement and others depending on the type of machinery and its method of operations. These hazards 
if uncontrolled, can cause accidents. To control, it is important to identify the existence of hazards followed by the assessment of risks.